I'm Juan and welcome back to my desk. I'm Bill and today we will look into this capacitive moisture sensor as part of my Arduino basic series where I connect different types of sensors to Arduino and we'll look at the basics on how they work. If you want to see uh, the other videos in the series then follow the playlist uh, on my channel and don't forget to subscribe so you can see the future videos as well. So the sensor that we have here is um, an upgrade on the original version that we had a while ago where on the original version we had two exposed contacts that actually made contact through the soil that uh, they measured the moisture on but uh, that presented with a problem where the positive electrode of the sensor would get corroded because of the DC current that was applied. So now this is an upgraded version. It's actually a version 1.2 and this one measures the, uh, the moisture uh, content in the soil a bit differently. Uh, as you can see here on the board there, there is one track that goes on the outside and one track that goes in the middle of the sensor and they form a capacitor that is then connected to a 555 and together with the uh, other electronics it produces an output voltage between 1.2 uh, 1 volt and about 3 volts and depending on the precision of uh, different components this voltage is a bit different on all of them so we will uh, first look into how we can connect this to the Arduino and then we can uh, see how we can calibrate it to get the most out of it. Uh, this is a really simple sensor, there is nothing on, on the back and the way you operate this is that you stick this pointy end up until the, this line into the soil and depending on the capacitance that it will see here at the measuring end, it outputs different voltage here on the analog out input. Um, you connect this to the Arduino in, a, in such a way that you connect ground to ground. You connect VCC either to 3.3 or to 5 volts. And then you connect the analog out to any of your analog inputs on the Arduino. And once you connect that, what basically happens is depending on the capacitance, this oscillator then oscillates with a different frequency and that oscillation is then smoothed out on the out through some of the uh, output capacitors and it's translated to a different voltage uh, to a different voltage level. To connect it up I'm using an Arduino Nano and this is the original cable that came with the sensor. I've extended it with uh, some jumper wires and I have the white wires connected to ground, then the uh, orange one is connected to 3.3 volts, uh, while the uh, signal wire is connected to analog input zero. And now let's jump into the code and see what we can um, inspect from there. Okay, I've connected the sensor here to the Arduino and it's connected to my computer where I've created a very simple sketch and this is basically um, what I do every time when I have a new sensor that I don't know how it works. I just connected it up to the Arduino and with this simple sketch what I do is, is I initiate a serial communication on the setup function and then within the loop I read the um, Analog, analog value that I get from the A0 pin where I've connected the sensor and I just uh, display that information on the serial monitor so with that we can see how the value changes depending on what we do to the sensor so I've uploaded this um, to the Arduino and if I now open the serial monitor we'll see that we now get a value of around 535 and this is the value that the sensor reads whenever it's uh, dry basically. So there is a small moisture in the air that's, affect, uh, that's affecting the uh, readout that we get from the sensor but that's um, minor. So um, 
Now, if I place my hand close to the sensor and I touch any of the of the probes, we get an update on the value. So instead of 540, we are now down to 480 something. And that depends on the area that I cover with my hand. Basically what it detects is uh, that it sees that there is something different than it was before. Um, but the best test will be if um, we put the sensor into a glass of water. So the 540-ish uh, value that we get from the sensor is when it's dry. But once we put it in water, uh, we get we go down to 444 in this case. So that basically means that we are now in a 100% moisture. Keep in mind that there is a line that's drawn on the circuit board and you don't need to, you should never put the sensor um, into water or any kind of moisture beyond that line as it's not uh, waterproof. So, if I now take it out, we see that we're back to 530 or close to what we were before. There's definitely some moisture left on there uh, that affects the reading. And if we wipe that out, that should go up. This only gives us a kind of relative uh, understanding what will be the output readout from the sensor. And we can now go in and update the sketch. So we translate this uh, movement from about 440 to about 540, about 100 points different in the output to translate that into um, sort of a percentage that we can show. Okay, so I've now updated the code that uh, we still have the basic readout of the analog value, but now we map that value between our new range. Um, what we saw when we measured the sensor in the water is that the, the values were moving from about 440 to uh, about 550. So with the map function, whatever we read from the sensor, uh, we tell it that it will move from um, 550 to um, 440. And we want to map this to from zero to 100%. Zero being the sensor uh, open in the air so zero percent moisture and a hundred being the sensor completely submerged into water so a hundred percent um moisture and at the end we print out these two values the first one is what we directly read from the sensor and then the other one is the value that we got uh, that we converted from that readout if i now upload this to the Arduino and we run the serial monitor again so we're now at 538 39 and that translates to about 10% moisture but if I now put the sensor into the water and I'll just put it slightly uh, we'll see that we are now at about 30% and the, the deeper I put it, the more percentage of moisture we detect and when it's all the way down, it's 95-94%, um, which is close to 100. Um, keep in mind that um, these values will, will be different for your sensors. Uh, so feel free to experiment on your own setup and see um, how your sensor is varying the values and adjust these two uh, adjustment values for the air value and the water value so you can get a better and more accurate readout.
and uh, determine how you would want to use this uh, now value from the moisture sensor into your projects. Uh, my plan is that I built a, a soil monitor for my garden where I would uh, stick this sensor into the soil and it at the beginning it will just report the state of the soil so if it's moist uh, enough or not uh, and let me know and alert me if I need to water it down uh, but the ultimate solution at the end is to have this sensor and other sensor connected to a central hub that is running home automation and that should theoretically be able to at some point turn on the irrigation automatically stick around and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing the development of such a project i'll go step by step um, where i'll talk uh, about the different uh, bits and pieces separately like we did today with the capacitive sensor and next up we'll be um, connecting a display to read out the value and we will then look into how we can um, connect this and other sensors to a central hub that will then connect to the home automation um, you can go the route where you can connect this to an um, ESP board with the Wi-Fi but unfortunately the Wi-Fi that I have doesn't reach all the way to the garden so I don't want to uh, rely on that but we'll do something something simpler, simpler that has a, a better range than that if you like this video then leave a thumbs up uh, make sure to subscribe, uh, let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions, if you have any idea what can I do to improve my garden and automate things. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.